like the word fake, I think it's offensive when it comes to professional wrestlers, because as far as I'm concerned, they are artists and they use their powers and their magic to make us all believe. However, there are a few things that we can talk about, which we are going to do here today. So hello, my name is Sarah from What Culture. Shouldn't have said it like that. That was a stupid thing to do. And yeah, there's 10 things that you see in WWE and then trying to see them, but you can't. Number 10, slap in the leg. So this created quite a storm a couple of years ago, didn't it? To the point, some promoters even put up massive signs that said, do not slap your leg. Don't see why. I like a good leg slap. The problem is when someone informs you, well, you're always going to see it. When it comes to me, though, whatever is going to make professional wrestling more fun is something I will advocate for. But yeah, it's like I just say, somebody did tell me about this a few years ago. And that was it. I was done. It's also being done in every single wrestling promotion there is. And look, once again, I think this ties into the art form. If you are going to give somebody a kick their super and you are going to whack your thigh, well, it's up to you to try and make sure that nobody else sees. And even if they do. We're all in on the game now. Just sit there, smile, make a bunch of noise, and trust me, you'll feel better in your tum-tum. You always wondered why. How the hell did that sound so loud? Now you know. Number nine, gimmicking the cage. So this is just WWE overthinking things, really. They do have a show every single week. You've got to do something. Because the whole point of the Hell in the Cell is to trap two people within that cage because they're coming to an end of the feud and they need to kill each other. One of these hombres keeps running away. So now it's like, listen, you need to stay there so somebody else can kick your ass. The thing is, though, as we have moved forward, our creative juices get going. One day someone's like, well, what if they were able to escape the building? So you may notice when this does happen and you look into the mesh, usually a little bit will be torn so that when two massive wrestlers do hit it, they can go tumbling to the outside. Number eight, spot calling. Yes, it happens. And if anything, you should point the finger of blame at the production company. Go and move the mics and let our sports entertainers do what they need to do. And yes, I think most people do know that wrestlers talk to each other when they're in the squared circle, because it ties back around once again. If you are really good at it, like a Randy Orton, his name just popped up into my brain, you feel the crowd and you're like, listen, we were gonna go left, but it's time to go right. I really do think the only reason we discuss this as much as we do is because of John Cena. That guy, in the best possible way, didn't care. He would just shout, elbow drop, and everybody would hear it. However, as the man who can't be seen explained, well, yeah, sure, the people in the front rows can, but I'm playing to everyone, and I want to make sure that they all have a good time. Also, we all nerd out for this kind of stuff anyway. It's like we're a part of a secret club, and we are, friends. We are. Number seven, the chair shot. So as a man who wrestles and has taken many a chair shot, let me tell you this. It doesn't matter where it strikes you on the body, it really, really hurts. It's still an object, and it's being swung with force, not a pillow now, is it? Safety comes into play here too, because of course in 2023 slash 2024, we're all aware of CTE, and I don't want anybody to get brained anymore. It's why when sometimes you see somebody pick up one of these, they may just poke somebody in the tum-tum. This is twofold. One, again, they're trying to protect them, but two, if you do do that, even though it will wind your opponent just a little bit, you don't go full and into those ribs, so everyone is mostly okay. I'll be honest, it still kind of sucks. Also, on this note, don't forget wrestlers need a life outside the ring too. Why do you always want them to be so damaged? Number six, catching the dive. Which is not as easy as you may think. Right, let's all stand sideways. Imagine you have a full adult come pelting at you. It's going to be kind of scary. This is where the craft does come back into play though. Because if you are the catchy, not only do you have to make sure you do your job, but you also have to make sure the guy giving you the dive looks as good as he possibly can. I mean, why do you think it was dubbed a suicide dive? It's meant to be totally insane. Now, actually, in the modern day, we have moved away from this, because let me present you to exhibit A, Darby Allen. Have you seen his dive? <laughs> he don't hold nothing back. He just pings into people. That's why he's absolutely fabulous to watch. Once again, you just never know what he's going to do. Number five, the tombstone. Speaking of which, my word, the tombstone. Now, we have seen this go wrong over the years, maybe most famously at the 1997 SummerSlam, when Owen Hart gave a proper tombstone pile driver to Steve Austin, and it broke his neck and ultimately shortened his career. This is why it should take around about 78 years to set this damn thing up. We'll take The Undertaker, because again, we all recognize that to be his move. And when he is hugging the person, he is making sure that their face and their head is nestled within the thighs, so that he drops down to the damn floor, he doesn't spike him and do who knows what. So again, I've been to him stuff. It's never a particularly fun ride. And once again, it's terrifying. But it is a maneuver that people have to master. So stop walking out into your back garden and trying to do it to your mate 
I can be your dad and tell you this, it's not gonna go well before the slam. Right, I'm just putting it in here because we don't respect it enough. And I know wrestling has evolved and now we're seeing 450 flippy dippy doodahs. So nobody looks back and sees the slam for what it is, but it is a damn good move and deserves more respect. I wanted to draw back the curtain too much though, although I've heard wrestlers talk about this on many a podcast. Basically, when you go to grab the other person and pick them up, they will take their hand and they will post off your leg. So you don't have to use all of your strength. That doesn't mean you can be a weakling, though. You still have to have some power to you, otherwise you're gonna drop them on the floor. But basically, do not just roll your eyes when you do see this. Sit back and once again, give everybody a round of applause as you see wonderful sports entertainment happening in front of your eyes. Number three, the play job. So yeah, tying back into my last comment, I've heard Steve Austin and Bret Hart talk about this on Steve Austin's podcast. So it feels like it's fair game, and it's always the thing that you tell non-wrestling fans, they're like, ha ha, that's not true, but it is. Because of course, if you want to bleed in a wrestling match, you can't do it the hard way, even though some people do, because that is way too dangerous. So instead, a razor blade is brought into the mix, and people just nick their heads, and out comes the red stuff. Now, WWE doesn't allow for this anymore, although they didn't really in the past either. And in that WrestleMania 13 match, Brett and Steve had to sneak around and not tell anybody. And it was actually Hart who did the job when it came to Austin, because he'd never really done it before, and he trusted in the hitman's experience. The best way to think about it is when you cut yourself shaving. Hurts a little bit, but then you get over it. Well, when you do it then, you don't look like an actual badass. Number two, stomping the boot. And on the flip side of that, Everyone knows about this, even my damn mother. I don't get why it's become such a big deal in later years. I mean, people really get on the case here. Because once again, we bring in Bret Hart to this. And he may have been the best ever at doing it because he would throw a punch and he would stamp his foot. And when it all came together, you're like, hot damn, man. I can't see through that at all. It also sounds great, which allows you to buy in more. I don't want to double back round to this. But we are watching some artists let them paint. It also allows you to throw everything into this because you can put a lot of force onto that foot that's going into the floor. So I love a good stomp when people punch. Yes, I know. A lot of people don't agree, but welcome to my life. Number one, reading the script. So we are definitely moving away from this as a hard and fast rule. But yes, there was a time if you were backstage in WWE and you were about to go to the ring to cut a promo, somebody would hand you a script and say, listen, you've got about 25 minutes to learn that. So you better do it now. But let's not forget about this wrestler too, because not only do they have to remember a match, they then have to remember word for word what is written on a piece of paper. Now, as I've already told you, thankfully we are moving away from this now. Ain't nobody running up to a CM Punk or a Chris Jericho or Roman Reigns saying, we think you should say this. They would look at you and go, no. I actually think it's a good system though, because when you do get somebody brand new, if they are a little bit nervous, you can write them a script. When someone clearly shows they have an aptitude for this, you say, well, let's just do bullet points and said, we need you to hit X, Y, and Z. I mean, that's the same as any other job. Why shouldn't it be the same here? So I really do think it's far better these days in WWE. And long may it continue. This is a weird comparison. I think it's one of the things that helped Drew McIntyre with his heel turn. When he was spitting fire, I believed every single word he said. That's because it was coming from Drew's tum tum. What? Now, if you did enjoy that, please click the video on the screen right now, which is 10 fascinating backstage facts about Roman Reigns. I mean, I mentioned him about 32 times. You may as well go educate yourself about the tribal chief. Also, thank you very much. Subscribe, like the video, comment. See you soon.